John's behind the camera, and welcome to Vertical South. If you guys like what we're doing, don't forget to share with your friends and like and subscribe down below. And today, we're gonna to be setting a V3 on the slab wall. Already got some holds lined up. Uh, these Mallorca mini jugs for the bottom part, because uh, the slab wall here at the gym's not a straight slab the whole way, kind of a little bit of an overhang on the bottom. So I'll use those to bring them up to the slab, and then we'll go from there. But let's get over to the wall. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna take the safety off. <laughs> it's just stuck in the middle. Actually, yeah, the safety was on when it's in the middle. I didn't realize that. So then the drill can't go. So cool. Makita makes good drills. Uh, all right, let's figure out. Got a nice spot down here, nice little open area. Or maybe I'll start them down here, come to here, and then go up there. So Nick, when you're selecting a place or like a line, um, and you're already on a pre-saturated wall like this, this wall already has like four problems on it. What are you What are you looking for generally? So I'm looking for like the negative um, when the wall is already set and pre-saturated, like John just said. I'm looking. I'll look at the wall, I'll look at the negative space in the wall in between the holds and kind of look at the negative space and see what that presents you. So right now on this one, I was going to start here because I was only looking at the bottom part of the wall and then I looked up and I'm like, oh, well, it's kind of good. If you look, there's kind of like a, an S, like a, there's, you have some space here and they can come up and then you got some open space here and then, you can, and then plenty of open space here. So, right off the bat, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. You can start them here, have like one move where they're down on this, and they come here, and then from here, they gotta come up to here, and then work up on the slab that way, or up to here and go that way. Nice. So we'll see. We'll put a couple starts. This. Yeah. I don't know how you got this to stick like that. <laughs> very, very, yeah. Just, just the tip of the bolt. I was already thinking um, kind of like a, a start like this and then kind of cross left and then drive up and hit a right gas stone onto the slab wall, which will probably be, and then I can use one of these Mallorcas, which will be like a good jug because it's a V3 and that overhanging, that's asking a lot, asking the climber a lot of uh, upper body strength uh, and being able to use their feet to drive up, which I think is a little bit, you know, that's kind of what you're getting into in the three range. You know, not really a ladder movement, a little bit more, uh, you know, strength required, a little bit of technique, kind of starting to ramp the climber up. And then you get into the four and the five and the sixes where got to have the strength, got to have the technique. Could have the brute strength, could have perfect technique, but you need a combination of both if you want to send. <laughs> If that makes sense. <laughs> this is the line here. I'm actually going to put this. I'll probably put it right on the line. And the further past that last point of contact there, that this hold moves, the harder the and harder, harder that gonna cross be. is going to get. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking about. Is I pro actually, I'm probably going to put it one past the line to make it a little difficult. Sure. We might let me tweak that when we forerun it. But, boom. I'll give him a foot there. We got him up on the slab wall and then slab 
you know, being like, like that, you're asking the climber for, it's not so much um, strength, be uh, like, ba like technique, meaning like it's balancey in body position. So, and they got them up and then they'll one or two moves, track their feet across, and then go straight up from there. And I'll probably, I'll just have them finish at the top with those three pieces of tape up there. So realistically, just one more hand. One more hand, and I'll probably do this one because it looks so cool. <laughs> like that. feet and I'm gonna start. So what are you thinking about V3 and V3 feet? V3 and V3 feet. It's a very good question John. And it comes down to like feet on the slab as well because I want them to be big enough for them to balance on. You'd think like this, this is pretty big and it is good for the slab but you're gonna be up, you're up there and you're, this is just gonna feel really small. You're gonna be up in your head. So I like to be I like to be generous on the V3 with the feet on the V3 slab with the feet since the hands are kind of uh, small little crimps or smaller crimps at the V3 level. That's when you're introducing a, say a smaller maybe a smaller hold, uh, asking the climber of the climber's hands a little bit more. So you want to complement that with good feet. Good enough feet. Perfect. I'll use my socks so I don't get to the Honestly, this might be. I don't know. It should be alright. I think it's to be a little harder. No, I was just thinking too many. If this is just, if this is enough feet. Makes the wall look pretty. I'm giving my foot out here. Yeah, right here. So I said I want to give them some more generous feet. I got a couple over there, but they're a little small. And this, this is the foot they're going to drive off their left foot on to get up onto the slab wall. So you want it to kind of be, you want it to be good enough to drive off of. Visible, Visible big. big, and you know, just exuding confidence. Yeah, because this is kind of like V3, and especially the slab is the main component of this problem is going to be the head game, more likely than anything. Is, like, like it to be the head game. Yeah. yeah. Easier to easier to keep them. It's easier to mess with the head game on a slab wall, I think. If that makes sense. Yeah. Because I have this one as a side pull and this one kind of a down pull side pull, I'm asking the climber for the first move to start to really create oppositional force driving down to the left that way and pulling up and to the right as they switch their body position and fall into this really good hold. And to do that, then they're going to switch this way and they're going to want a foot to stab out to right there. That's going to be comparable. Might be too close, but might move that there just to keep them keep them really driving this way. But that might be all right. Yeah, and then they have here. Now they have a foot here. Very well appreciated. Um, I started it um, 
I think you're almost ready for a four run, my friend. Yeah, you know, I, I'm thinking one more foot here so they can track, they can foot these. They got their, what you just saw where I was, I had a foot here and a foot here. And then to move, to track, move their feet so they can get a right foot out to here and then a left foot up to here. So I'll probably put, just lost it in my head where I was. And I think uh, I think we're ready to get John on here to four run it. Let's see what he thinks. All right, so I'm gonna check out this V3 and see how the moves feel and see if they're in the grade. Just after watching Nick set it, he was very considerate about the feet and the quality of the hands, depending on the quality of the wall, the pitch of the wall. So I already have a good feeling that this is gonna be right in range. The only thing I'm curious about is this first cross. Nick's stronger than he knows, and sometimes he'll throw a cross that looks very easy, but is actually much harder than it is. Um, so I'm going to look out for that one, but the rest of it I have good confidence is probably right in that three range. But let's see how it feels on the wall. That's not too bad. finding my way down. <laughs> the only part that I was a little confused on was going up to this right hand crimp and then passing into this very close side pull. Um, I think that this side pull, it didn't really help me as much. Uh, the side pull didn't really help me as much as I expected it to. If it was moved over, maybe just one T-nut, you'd find people accessing it more and it'd give you better um, tension between the right hand that you're going towards and the left hand. I think that's a really clever move. However, in its current status, unedited, it's a, it's a pretty solid three. And forgive my footwork, it's early. Well, yeah, let's, uh, let's make that change and we'll see, uh, see how, how you cool. feel. Cool, yeah. And we should be good. Yeah, sounds good. Because just over one more, I think it would be just a little bit more natural feeling. Yeah. Right there and right there it was very, very close. But let's, John, I just moved it over, so let's get you up here and tell me, tell me I did good. <laughs> Stoked on this problem, you did a, a real good job. Let's see if that little edit um, made it just feel more natural. That's always a good term to define your problems by, is like, you can get a move to work, but does it feel natural? Does it feel like something your body wants to climb? Is it difficult just for the sake of things being like, like really close together or like Nick said, frustrating? Because if it's just frustratingly hard, people aren't gonna climb it. You want it to be a natural challenge, if that makes sense. It's more of like a ethereal mentality than something you can quantify, but your body knows it when you climb it, kind of. That's very well said. That move's very fun. <laughs> Oh yeah, now that's a super easy pass off, like way, way more natural feeling. So there you have it, a V3 from start to finish. If you guys like the little bit of a longer format where John and I go into a little bit more detail into what we're doing, please uh, like and subscribe and comment below. And tune in next week when we set something else.